हेलो
have done? Children, children and workers also we have done. They do one thing that is quite emergency, uh, just to go through. If any doubt is there. Under page number four. Page number one fifty four. One fifty four. One fifty five. Today, anyhow, I have to complete. and we will go back if it is out as well. If you are reading that part of course, you cannot complete it. Uh, in, the, in the end the world of prayer, before that, just before that, uh, new innovations are there. That is, in the print, we have learned that the mechanical printing was introduced at all. And the demand for more prints also came. So, with the need, new new innovations were introduced. What were the new innovations? The first one is that yeah, Richard and Wu of New York had perfected the power driven cylindrical press. Okay. One of the innovations is power driven cylindrical. <coughs> So, this one was introduced by Richard and uh, Okay, this is uh, how it was useful. It was capable of printing 8,000 copies a So, now lack of the copies so they are printing. But at that time, 8,000 copies at a time. It was a great innovation. So that is what the 8,000 sheets per hour. This press was particularly useful for what the newspapers. Newspaper only we needed more prints. So power driven cylindrical press. Next one is that 19th century, late 19th century. The, what is the, the offset press was developed? Hmm. It could print up to six colors at a time. So, what is that? Uh, offset press hmm. could print uh, six colors at a time. We know that. Yes, no, no, black and white. Ah, that is earlier it was, this all prints were of black and white. Now, colors. Six colors at a time. You just imagine at that time how much revolutionary it was. That is why we are seeing that uh, what were the innovations. Now, third innovation from the turn of 20th century electrically operated process accelerated printing operation. Accelerated means speed up. Methods of feeding the paper, all those points you just have to underline. But that, that uh, method of feeding paper improved, quality of plates become better, automatic paper reels, and photoelectric controls of color register. These were the changes. Okay. 
Now there was a time black and white uh, photos were taken. From that, now in your mobile, so many varieties of photos could be taken. And there so many ways it can be presented. So just imagine about this development. So when you are celebrating birthday or like that, so so many ways you are uh, that they having. Uh, so this all you can do in a mobile. You just imagine how with the help of different machines, how much uh, speed up that uh, work. Next one is that uh, the accumulation of several individual mechanical improvements transformed. Uh, the appearance of printed text. Now, what happened? Many machineries, many different uh, machines combined their work. So, when these machines combined their work, what happened? What was the outcome of that? Yeah? So, many mechanical transformation in the appearance of the printed text. See that uh, uh, how we need that is different paragraph way or that the margin is required or in the box it is required or not. So like that. So many transformations in the appearance of the text. Next is that the printers and publishers continuously developed new strategies to sell their product. 19th century periodical serialized important novels. But serial, when, uh, the television serials you are doing. So big novels used to be uh, appeared in part parts. So weekly you are getting to know one part of it. Part, part, part. Uh -huh. So that is what. So big <laughs> novels began to be serialized. So then, uh, what, like, did it uh, sell more? Or... Yes. See, if I am interested to read that uh, novel, I am eager to get the next book. Okay, fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, a suspense is created at the end. So that the next week, the people will be eagerly waiting to get. The same way, serials in the television, the next uh, what was uh, yes, this is what uh, happened during that uh, time. In 1920s, in England, a popular box was sold in cheap series called a shilling series. One shilling, that the popular ones were written in smaller. Shilling. shilling is the currency. currency. Understood. See, in our country, Paisi. So like that, shilling is the cheapest currency at that time. Okay. Then, the dust cover of the book jacket is also 20th century innovation. That is book cover. See, binds are the, that is book is having the bind. So the presentation of the bind itself is uh, attracting the people. So that time, in order to make it to reach the paper, dust by it. That means cheap binds. But anyhow, this should be reaching to the paper. So that is what a dust cover. With the onset of the Great Depression in 1930s, publishers learned, uh, feared a decline in book purchase. To sustain buying, they brought up cheap paperback editions. Buy it or become costly. So now paperback edition. So means it is not that costly. So people need to buy. It has to be continued. There should not be any break. So uh, great depression time, people are not having money in them. So they wanted to continue. Okay. You understood that part? Let us continue with the manuscripts before the age of print. Already we have studied what were the types of manuscripts. We know that in India, earlier time onwards, 
there were printed material sorry printed material no manuscripts that is handwritten copies they have written manuscripts on palm leaves have you ever seen this way palm leaves is that clear work document like ah so that is called ah so that is called with a nail type it is just incised into that that was the earlier document okay then manuscripts were copied on palm leaves or on handwritten paper pages were sometimes beautifully illustrated so if paper they were doing the work beautifully they used to decorate it they would be either pressed between wooden covers or sewn together to ensure preservation so either they stitch together or pressed between so that it will stay we know that in our days we are using staples so it will stay together that they would be sorry manuscripts continued to be produced till well after the introduction of print down to the late 19th century even after 19th century also they used they continued making such manuscripts they had to be handled carefully and they could not be read easily as the script was written in different styles you know two problems were there one is that they had to be handled carefully then next is that they could not be read easily because the stylish writing are different so people could not understand it easily now so manuscripts were not widely used in everyday life understood because of all those problems manuscripts were not widely used even though pre colonial bengal had developed an extensive network of village primary school students were often very often did not read books books were not there so teachers used to transmit the knowledge orally children used to uh, uh, listen they heard that what was taught to the taught by the teachers and they used to write they they only learned to write teachers dictated the portions of text from memory and students wrote them down many thus became literate without ever actually reading any kinds of text now how print came to india who brought it in india print was brought by jesuit priests who brought it jesuit priests jesuit means one christian religious order they came for reaching christianity in india so portuguese and that is jesuit priests they brought a print in india and they learned konkani ah uh, konkani is one of the language that is what is a variant of marathi ah uh, it actually it is uh, practicing or it is talked by the goans uh, okay in 1674 about 50 books had been printed in konkani and in kannada language okay Konkani and the Kannada. This is one of the paper. Right. Ah. See, for spreading the religion, they used to have tract. One of the things that the railway station and all people used to give that were tract for reading purpose. The, this way only they spread that the mm, missionaries used to spread the religious teaching for missionaries. Catholic priest printed the first Tamil book in 1579. That years and 
with you who prepared with your uh, Catholic priest temple book in 1579 and in 1738 Kerala. See, actually, that it was not uh, exactly on the basis of boundaries. That time, uh, the ruler who ruled some territories came under that uh, ruler's territory. So it was not exactly Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka. That is how then the new Goa, even though it was a separate uh, region, or it was formed into a state after 1970. Understood? It was the part of uh, Maharashtra. Even Gujarat was also part of Maharashtra. So that way. linguistic basis, it was not in the country. Then, in 1713, the first Malayalam book was printed by the. In 1710, Dutch Protestant missionaries. Dutch are the people of Holland. Dutch are the people of Holland. So these were like the translations of Holland. Protestant missionaries had printed 32 Tamil texts, so many of them translations of older ones. Okay. The English language press did not grow in India till quite late, even though the English East India Company began to import presses from the late 70s. So English was not in the one, one the reason is that it, it was not taught in the schools. Children cannot understand this language. So without knowing that language, how can they spread it? So they were taught only the regional language. Regional language. And that is why the foreign missionaries also learned that language and uh, printed the tracks in that language. From 1780, James Augustus Kiki began to edit the Bengali Bengal Gazette. Mm -hmm. A weekly magazine that described itself as a commercial paper open to all but experts by none. So, this is important. So, who published that in Bengal was that? Ah, so, he was an Englishman. But later on, another Bengal was that was published by an Indian, that is Gurghada Bhutajaya. Huh? Okay. Then, it was private English enterprise, proud of its independence from colonial influence that began English printing in India. So, uh, independent press only, they, he used to write a lot of books about the English press. So, they wanted to ban him. So, that way, that the publication was completely stopped. He also published a lot of gossip about the company's senior officials in India. Embraced by this, Governor General Warren Hastings persecuted Hickey and encouraged the publication of officially sanctioned newspapers that could counter the flow of information that damaged the image of colonial So, in order to bring back the lost image, he told English newspapers to be published by the government. Because of uh, Augustus uh, Hickey's work, he, he used to uh, tarnish the image of the uh, British officials. He was telling the real, real thing only, but uh, because of that, uh, it was uh, tarnishing the uh, image of. So they have bought from Hickey. Uh, so what the law that you. Uh, Press was says that he was uh, persecuted. Persecuted means the uh, trial was done and he was found the guilty, according to them. Okay. By the close of the 18th century, a number of newspapers and journals appeared in print. There were Indians too who began to publish Indian newspapers. The first was Bengal Gazette by Gangadhar Hattachan. Okay, now, re 
religious reforms and the public debates. We know that so many evils were prevailing in the country. Uh, we learned about the Rajara Mohan Roy, who tried to abolish Sati and all. He could do it with the help of British. William Bentley abolished that. So, in order to make the people aware that these are wrong practices, he had to do, he not only really did, many other reformers also wanted to spread that ideas. What they have done? From the early 19th century, as you know, there were intense debates about religious issues. Different groups confronted the changes happening within the colonial society in different ways and offered a variety of new interpretations of the belief of different relief. Okay. Some criticized the existing practices and campaigned for reform, while others countered the argument of reforms. So, what is that they wanted to propagate new ideas, telling the wrong aspects. Other one counter the teachings of the reforms. These debates were carried out in public and in print. So normally, uh, if a topic is coming, one uh, topic, let us see that uh, whether the name of India will be changed into Bharat. So there were different different types of arguments. If the topic is coming, that is everyone will eagerly involved. In. Some join the side of that, okay, name should be changed. Some people will tell that it not to change. That is a joint way India is known to the world as India. So it should not be changed. Then that the arguments will come. So that is what is counter. Okay. Now, uh, a wider public could now participate in these public discussions and express their views. New ideas emerge through these clashes of opinion. So when they were clashing, new ideas also emerged. Yeah. See, uh, Harad or India. So in that case, a new group will come out. Neither Harad nor India. So that way also can come out. This should be a different name. Understood. <clears throat> This was a time of intense controversies between social and religious reformers and the Hindu orthodoxy over matters like a widow immolation. What is widow immolation? Service. Ah. Monotheism. Brahminical priesthood and idolatry. All the words are clear to you? Monotheism, Monotheism the worship of one God. Uh, idol images, idol, uh, idol worship. In Bengal, as the debate developed, tracts and newspapers proliferated. Proliferated means it come into the market in large numbers. Circulating a variety of arguments, not one type of argument, hundreds of arguments is to come. To reach a wider audience, the ideas were printed in the everyday spoken language of ordinary people. I have told you, in order to reach it to the large number of audience, it should be in the common language. Ram Mohan Rai published the Sambat Kavari. These names you have to underline. Eh? Who was the author or like that, master following or something like that. Sambat Kavari in 1821, Hindu Orthodoxy commissioned Samachar Chandrika to oppose the opinion. Hmm? Orthodox Hindus published Samachar Chandrika. In 1822, the two Persian newspapers were published, 
In the same year, Gujarati newspaper, the Bombay Samaja, made its appearance. Still, that time, Gujarat was not separated, but language was also separated. Okay, this much is clear to you. Now, Muslim religious, <coughs> sorry, Muslim religious text in Urdu. In North India, Ulema were deeply anxious about the collapse of Muslim dynasties. Ulema means a religious teachers. They feared that the colonial rulers would encourage the conversion, change the Muslim personal laws. Okay, understood? But they were feared. Ah. To counter this, they used a cheap lithographic process. Little a story. Published Persian and Urdu translations of holy scriptures and printed religious newspapers and tracts. The Deoband Seminary, founded in 1867, published thousands upon thousands of fatwas. Fatwas, no, fatwa. Fatwa is the to order by the religious teachers. Okay. Telling Muslim readers how to conduct themselves in their everyday life and explaining the meaning of Islamic law. All through the 19th century, a number of Muslim sects and seminaries appeared. So, uh, among the uh, Muslims also, this type of uh, reform movements started, and they were making that uh, Islamic people to be religious, not to fall into the trap of other teachings. That is why the religion, uh, religious teachings were spread. Now, Urdu print helped them conduct these battles in public. So, that was the language of uh, Islam. So, when um, the language books are translated, teachings are given, for tours are given, so it was very easy for that uh, people to understand. Now, Hindu religious texts in vernacular languages. Among Hindus, too, print encourages the reading of religious texts, especially in the vernacular language. We know that the Hindu scriptures were written in Sanskrit. Nobody could read. Nobody could understand. So when it was translated in the local language, majority of the people could understand. This was also very late when uh, the, the television started. It that the Ramayana and Mahabharata was serialized. Many people began to understand the theme. The first printed edition of Ram Chandmanas, the underlined Ram Chandmanas of Tulsidas, a 16th century text, came out from Calcutta in 1810. By the mid 19th century, cheap lithographic editions flooded North India. In 1880s, Naval Kishore Press at Lucknow and Sri Venkateshwara Press in Bombay published numerous religious texts in Varnakas, which are the presses Naval Kishore Press in Lucknow and the Sri Venkateshwara Press in Bombay. In their printed and portable form, this could be read easily by the faithful at any place and time. See, we know that uh, there was a sacredness in that uh, holy scriptures. People will not uh, carry that uh, holy scriptures wherever they go. But uh, when it is translated uh, and it is made in a portable form that is carried, uh, they can carry from one place to another. They can keep in their bag or like that. Uh, so it was easy for them to take it around with them and read it. 
they could be read out to large groups of lit uh, sorry literate men and women have you heard about the ram leela maitra yeah ah uh, yeah. uh, so in delhi the, the uh, very huge ground is but this kind of ramayan and all that is there was a month for ramayan reading so the religious teachers used to spread that teachings of uh, ramayan and all to bhashan that is prabhashan that is what they used to be heard so people used to come and attend that one and they can understand that is some of the interpretations they cannot understand but the words which are used in that scriptures are not easy to understand so this helped them so this way many many places the, during that particular month the uh, prakashan used to be there okay so like did that affect any people and did it affect anything yeah it can help them to understand uh, see what is actually written uh, for example bhagavad gita is a part so through that uh, lord krishna was giving advice to arjun okay gita upadesh this gave so the sentences which are written in sanskrit common people cannot understand what is the meaning of it when it was interpreted by the religious leaders people can understand in their own language okay next uh, religious text therefore reached a wide variety uh, wide number of uh, people encouraging discussions debates and controversies within and among different religions okay new forms of publication now how this kind of uh, things say if a great book you are just talking about the uh, shakespeare's julius caesar okay so this book is will you go on by and read that one if you are interested then read yes but if it is included in the syllabus then definitely you have to buy and you have to study also understood and that also it is not original book the which you are getting because that the language of shakespeare in english is very hard for you guys so this kind of conditions that is uh, when new forms arise people get an opportunity to purchase it and uh, Read the novels are the those who are interested. You told us and then said, "If I am interested, I will buy. If I am not interested, I will not buy." So those who are very much interested in reading and particular type of books they want. So earlier times, reading was a hobby for large numbers. Nowadays, reading is not there. if you are getting the time you take the mobile or this one and play on it so this kind of reading lost its importance reading has lot of advantages the things which we are reading that will always in our memory and that can be used with the another Listen. Now that reading is not at all the earlier time. Parents, especially mothers and their grandparents, they used to tell stories to the children, and that stories have great influence in the minds of the children. How it is influencing? Every time when they are telling a story. 
they used to give a moral compass. This moral will be like a seed which is sown in the mind. And it will start growing. When they grow up, this one will be the, that quality or that moral which was taught. Present day there is no reading, no knowledge, only for exam purpose you are reading something and going to the examination hall. You forget and that's all. But lot of information if you are reading, if that is not remembered also something you can write. This is what the dual means. Okay. So, various types of uh, newspapers. Newspapers conveyed news from one place to another, creating pan Indian identities. So, it is not uh, related to the events that have taken place in one part. Pan that means it is the event have its influence in other one. Printing created an appetite for new kinds of writing. See, earlier, when they started with the religious books, from the new, new types of uh, writings came in. There are small kids who are interested in writing poetry. Their imagination, whatever they are seeing around them, they used to write poetry. Some are interested in painting and drawing. So whatever is there in their mind, they are uh, putting into uh, the form of uh, that others can read. Hmm. As more and more people could now read, they wanted to see their own life's experiences, emotions and relationships reflected in what they read. See, they wanted to imitate those and they also wanted to tell that their life to others. See, they wanted to compare their life with the, okay. uh, the, uh, the events which they have read. They connect the things and a new form of writing will come. How? Uh, biographies, stories, then uh, um, uh, novels. If they can extend it elastically, then if they can extend it, it will be a big story. Okay. Uh, as for a, sorry, the novel and literary firm which had developed in Europe ideally catered to this need. I told you. When the events, once one event on that, another event is connected and it is made into a lengthy story. So that become a norm. It soon acquired distinctively Indian forms and styles. See, when we are reading, that, uh, I have told you about the uh, Shakespearean novel or uh, drama or whatever, poetry or whatever it is. When it is connected to Indian life, we take Indian state. Uh, here the chivalry of the knights, uh, if it is written. Here princes are there. Like that, there's so many that uh, if we want to write about farmers, if we want to write about merchants, there are merchants of Venice was there. So here also many such personalities, they can connect our stories, uh, sorry, our related things. Then, for readers, it opened up a new world of experience and gave a vivid sense of diversity of human lives. When you see that uh, the lifestyle of the people of uh, Maharashtra, if you are taking, Maharashtra also different uh, sections of people. Their food habits are different. Their culture is different. Their habits are different. Understood? The, the way of celebrating festival is different. So like that, 
various new things came to influence the bank. Then, other new literary forms also entered the world of reading, lyrics, short stories, essays about social and political matters. In different ways, they reinforced new emphasis on human lives and intimate feelings about the political and social rules that shaped the societies. See, new emphasis on human life, but what influenced them? Cubicle, see, uh, most of the uh, persons, that is, uh, soldiers, the soldiers' fathers may be the soldier or so by seeing the father, this child wanted to. So there are something which influence. Many of the doctors' children may not want to become doctors, but parents will force them because that status will go. Otherwise, they never want to become doctors. Understood? So, in the, whatever they are seeing in their life began to influence the lifestyles also, next uh, uh, related events also, not so. Then, by the end of the 19th century, a new visual culture was taking shape with the setting up of an increasing number of printing presses. Visual images could be easily reproduced in multiple copies. We know that when you are watching a movie, what is the importance of that? You are not just hearing the things. There is a visual effect. By seeing that a person's movie, the activities and all have a great impact. That is what visual images are playing a major role. Understood? When you are reading the novel or drama of the uh, Kalidasa, many of the things you can not understand. But when it is played, you can get an image of what happened that day. You are connecting your life with that person or you are just becoming that person. So the identifying with that person. So this is for the effect of visual image. Okay. Painters like Raja Revarma, he was a uh, king. That is what uh, Raja Revarma, his name is Revarma. He belonged to the family of a uh, royal family from Kerala. From childhood onwards, when he engaged, he used to. That time, courts are becoming, palaces are very vast. On the walls of the palaces, he began to draw. Ah, so, Raja River was paintings are more important than as a ruler. He did not become a ruler. He is a uh, uh, famous painter. He traveled. All over the country. So if we get a thing, he wanted to get the same person. That is, he is having a, an image in his mind. That person he wanted to, to draw. If he want to draw about a particular painting, he have a concept. Okay, that lady would look like this. So he will roam around to find the same person and then make that a real uh, painting of that person. That way he was a great painter. Raja Nivarama produced images of mass circulation, poor wood engravers who made wood blocks set up shop near the letter presses. So, what, what happened? Everyone cannot draw. 
some more writers so for the letters some paintings are also essential so good luck painters are setting up the shop near the press cheap prints and calendars easily available in the bazaar could be bought even by the poor to decorate the walls of the homes or places of work these prints began shaping popular ideas about the modernity and tradition so there is a connection between modernity and the tradition then hmm, religion and politics and society and culture by the 1870s caricatures and cartoons caricature means that a human image is drawn if uh, the, you want to uh, make uh, a person as a person for laughing laughing stock so it is not that buffooning that person <coughs> see uh, what happened i know rahul okay so in order to create an image of a baby or a mole baby like that so uh, for picture is drawn with a pencil sketch to create a laughing stock this is okay, okay now that the standard of consent uh in uh, new standard stage for animation yes before the animation this was the what is cartoon is different from caricature then were being published in journals and newspapers commenting on social and political issues some caricatures ridiculed the educated indians fascination with the western place and clothes while others expressed the fear of social change see Uh, some people are blindly imitating that uh, foreign persons in their dress, in their costumes, in their appearance, in their way of talking. So through that caricatures, they wanted to ridicule it. There were the imperial caricatures lampooning the nationalists. So. royal side they made the caricatures about the nationalist leaders and this you see uh, actually many of the uh, caricatures of mahatma gandhi so actually he was not a poor person or like that to not having the dress to wear so he believed in self reliance he wanted to encourage the people to do that but every bird that a picture of mahatma gandhi is shown with that half naked person so this came in large numbers to create mockery on that nationalist Lamboning nationalist as well as nationalist cartoons criticizing India or the uh, vice versa. Okay. Women and print here uh, few uh, women eh? writers and printers are there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so much is there. I can't complete or stay more. Huh. See, uh, earlier then, I'm telling you all this thing in English. Uh, earlier then, education was not equal to girls. Okay, during that day, what was the problem? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. India. India. Uh, parents, especially fathers, thought that if the girls are given education, uh, they will become widows. So they were not sent to school, or 
they will get spoiled. So, girls' education was not there. So, there are so many women who wanted to get education. So, they studied by themselves and some women, they started schools also. For example, Savitri Bhai Pune. Ah, so, Tara Bhai Shete. Okay. Then there is one lady named Raj Sudhari Devi. Okay. She wrote books highlighting the experiences of a woman about how women were imprisoned at home. Kept in ignorance, forced to do hard domestic labor and treated unjustly by the very people they serve. So, food and all, they cook and give. That people are treating unjustly. So, they solve also so many other you just read and Rashundari Devi is another person is the Rashundari Devi. So, she did not. Uh, get uh, formal education and think. She was an illiterate woman. So, young married girl in a very orthodox household learned to read the secrecy of the kitchen. She learned by herself. What she did, uh, if any paper she get, that paper she will keep and uh, she used to tear that pages of that uh, her Brother in law's book and alphabets she compared, and then she learned by herself, and then she uh, wrote her autobiography, Amar Jibet. Understood? Wrote uh, the first woman who wrote that uh, longest autobiography. The book name is Amar Jibet. So these are things we really done. Huh? Already so many times.